Good morning, everyone. My name is Mighty Stream. Today is actually September the 15th. I'm going to do the Just for Today in a Meditation with you. I'm brought to you by Hope Through Navigation, and this is our Hood Recovery Services. Let's go ahead and get into the meditation just for today. Hopefully you can see that. Feeling the emptiness, September 15th. We think that if we can just get enough food, enough sex, or enough money, we'll be satisfied and everything will be all right. Basic text, page 80. In our addiction, we could never get enough drugs or money or sex or anything else. Even too much was never enough. There was a spiritual emptiness inside us. Though we tried as hard as we could to fill that emptiness ourselves, We never succeeded. In the end, we realized that we lacked the power to fill it. It would take a power greater than ourselves to do that. So we stopped using and we stopped trying to fill the emptiness in our gut with things. We turned to our higher power asking for its care, strength, and direction. We surrendered and made way for that power to begin the process of filling our inner void. Let me sip this coffee, you guys. <laughs> oh, like a baritone. Okay. We stopped grabbing things and started receiving the free gift of love from our higher power um, that our higher power had for us. Slowly, our inner emptiness was being filled. Now that we've been giving our higher powers given our higher powers gift of love what do we do with it if we collapse that gift tightly to ourselves we will smother it we must remember that love grows only when it is shared we can only keep this gift by freely giving it away the world of addiction is a world taken taking and being taken. The world of recovery is a world of giving and being given. In which world do we choose to live? Just for today, I choose to live in the fullness of recovery. I will celebrate my conscious contact with the God of my understanding by freely sharing with others that which has been freely shared with me. Let's take a moment of silence followed by the wee version of serenity prayer. Moment of silence now, please. God, grant us the serenity to accept the things we cannot change, the courage to change the things that we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Please and thank you. Hey guys, Ah, good morning, good morning. Yesterday was the absolute longest day. So this is what I want to say about this meditation. First of all, I thank God that I was on the wake up list this morning and I hope that you are grateful for your life as well. Yeah, so this meditation, right, is talking it's it, it makes it sound like it's talking about our disease of addiction and how we need it so much right we were never satisfied one is too many and how do we say it? a thousand is never enough uh we couldn't get enough food sex or enough money nothing was able to satisfy it by us okay satisfy us we eventually found out that we had this disease of addiction. I don't know if you guys remember when drinking alcohol, they used to call it having a wet brain. But when the terminology alcoholism first came out, when they started t- saying that drinking the alcohol, alcohol to an excess was alcoholism, and the person that did it was an alcoholic, 
people's understanding and their perception of people that drank too much started to change. Well, here in Narcotics Anonymous, we know we consider alcohol to be a drug, right? So now the disease of addiction is no longer, oh, uh, she's a dope fiend. That's a crackhead, right? We use respectable terms for all of us, right? Even if your drug of choice is alcohol, even if your drug of choice is weed, we use the same term for everyone. We are addicts in recovery, suffering from the disease of addiction. We learned that the disease of addiction is mental, physical, and spiritual, right? And in order to heal that, in order to recover from that, we need to go deeply into the things that precipitated our disease of addiction becoming active. True enough, some people probably were born with it. And all it took, because it was already in their system as babies, all that it took was one hit, right? And they were off to the races. We use this terminology because it's universal. Everyone understands what it is. But also it takes the disease of addiction and it puts it into the realm of a medical issue. Okay, when people start to understand that they have something that is in a, a disease, okay, instead of a moral efficiency, deficiency, rather, right? When we, when we understand that we are not morally deficient, we are people, human beings that are suffering from the disease of addiction, that's where we start to give ourselves some grace and some room to actually seek help and begin to recover. This particular reading is talking about that, but it goes beyond that. What happened to you when you stopped trying to fill the empty hole? with things, drugs, people, and you slid our your slick tail, <laughs> my slick tail, into recovery. What happened? We started to have faith again and trust again. Now, we may have been hurt in the rooms, but we don't hopefully stay hurt because we're learning the spirit of forgiveness. But even when we talk about the spirit of forgiveness, the gift that we actually got was love. Yeah, somebody took love and placed it in front of our air. So now they no longer see our air. They, they see love first. You know how they used to say the St. Saint Francis prayer uh, in AA? It's better to forgive than be forgiven. Is better to understand than to be understood. This is called the St. Francis prayer, right? And it's a very powerful prayer. I would suggest that you pull it up and that you read it every day, right? So that you can set your mind right. Because we were given love and now it behooves us to give it freely in a healthy sense, right? Let's not complicate it. It's very difficult to... Uh, be in need of something and receive it freely and then someone come along and they need the same thing and you refuse to give it to them. That's why the atmosphere of recovery is so easily set in the rooms of Narcotics Anonymous. Even if you knew them in the street. If you knew them in the street, it was a dog-eat-dog -dog world, right? That world was one of taking and being taken, as this reading says. But in the world of recovery, in the rooms of Narcotics Anonymous, 
there is a spirit of forgiveness and unconditional love. And it's a world of giving and being given. So we're not in a position to, I don't, I mean, you can choose anything you want, but to choose to be uh, mean and dark in a meeting, right? Unkind, short-tempered, all of those uglier traits to do that in a meeting with recovering people. And you came from the same trap house, <laughs> right? The same neck of the woods. And we want to treat people like they're less than us. No, no, that's not going to work. We don't have to befriend everyone. Like I said, once you leave the rooms, once you leave a meeting, you don't have to acknowledge anyone if you don't want to, because it's an anonymous program. That's why they said, don't give us your last name. But hopefully you are developing a relationship with some people that you can disclose who you are completely to. You know, I am happy to be alive today. I'm grateful for my recovery and I choose to live in the fullness of recovery. I hope you will too. And I am celebrating my conscious contact with the God of my understanding by freely sharing with others that which has been freely shared with me. Love, the message of recovery, forgiveness, passion, these are things that make up who I am today. And I am amazed at the times when I feel the least spiritual. The perception of those encountering me is that I am very spiritual. And they will express it. And I, I'll tell them, that is nothing but God. <laughs> and I say it kind of comically because I know they can't read my mind. They don't know what I've gone throughout the day. They don't know my circumstance, but I do. God does. And somehow in the, the depth of my weakest, weakest moments spiritually, I am able to still dig deep enough and love others. I want that for you. I owe you nothing but to love you. I want that for you because I know how beautiful and free it can actually be. Today, I have an assignment for you. And I know this might challenge some of you. And if you struggle with it, reach out to me at recoveryofhope21 at gmail.com. But today... I want some of you, I want all of you actually, I want to challenge you. You're going to encounter someone that you always encounter every day. They may know that you don't like them because of how you've been acting towards them or dismissing them or ignoring them. I don't want you to go seeking them out Whenever the encounter happens, I want you to do the opposite of what you've been doing. If you've been blowing them off or just nodding your head, I want you to call them by name and say, good morning, so-and-so. Good morning. How are you doing today? I, or I, I know we don't get a lot of opportunities to talk, but I'm wondering, how are you doing? Is your family doing okay with this pandemic thing? I want you to do something different. Uh, maybe it's giving a newcomer or somebody you dislike a compliment that's genuine. You know what? That blue really looks good on you. That's a good color for you. Now, if that seems a little bit too fishy or disingenuous, it could just simply be, hey, how you doing? It's so good to see you at a meeting, right? 
I want you to do something different with that one person you struggle with. My name is Mighty Stream, and I am an addict in recovery. And I will be talking to you tomorrow.